Greetings from Baha'u'llah for comfort and confidence. Number two. Reading number one from Book of the Tigris. Javad, I shall share with you one letter, which is pure compassion and clemency, which has been taken from the substance of the books and the essence of the scrolls, so that from the cloud of oneness, the water of self-sufficiency might rain down upon your reality and the reality of the servants. Thus might you attain to eternal life, which is this. Possess a pure, kindly and radiant heart, that yours may be a sovereignty, ancient, imperishable and everlasting. This is my treasure, which is related to you. If it lives and is implemented, it shall never die nor perish. This is a light that is not extinguished, a treasure that is not exhausted, a raiment that does not wear out, and a splendour over which no curtain is drawn. By it, many are led astray, whereas others are guided. Praise God that you have been the recipient of this universal word, this divine melody, and this celestial song. I have found nothing more incontrovertible than this phrase, otherwise I would have shared it with you. I have no greater counsel than the saying mentioned above. Preserve it if you wish to find a path to the possessor of the throne. Because of the love I bear for that gentleman, this answer has been written. Otherwise, I have no inclination to write anything or to compose a single letter. God suffices as a witness and a protector for you. Therefore, arise with legs of iron to tread the highway that we have stretched out upon the white land of the Spirit. With blazing eyes, gaze upon its pillars and its foundations. With ears of sapphire, listen to what has appeared to you from in regard to the question you posed. With a golden palm and fingers of power, take what is therein and what is upon it. Confess with the tongue of song and celebration, with clapping and drumming, that there is no God but He. Verily, we all cling to Him. In truth, this word distinguishes between truth and falsehood until the day when the hour shall strike, when all shall be present before God and all abide by his bidding. Glory be upon those who believe in him on the day of the encounter on which they attain to his presence. Reading number two from Surah of Sorrows. Happy are ye, insofar as ye shall never find for yourselves anyone to share in these fruits that came forth from the lote tree of thy Lord, the Exalted, the Most High. God has singled you out for them, as he has all those who turn toward them with pure and sincere hearts. Taste thou of these fruits. Be grateful for the wonders of thy Lord's grace that have been bestowed upon thee, and let thy joy be manifest. God has reserved them for those of his servants who are nigh unto him, and hath caused those who join partners with him to be deprived thereof. 
we have caused the gentle gales of the all-merciful to blow upon thy breast, spirit and heart, from the right hand of the all-praised. Thus mightest thou live by virtue of his life, endure forever in his immortality, speak forth his praise, make mention of his name, turn toward his countenance, and gaze upon his beauty. Verily, his grace to thee hath ever continued to be great, wondrous, invincible, and sublime. Reading number three from Tablet to the Zoroastrians. O servant of God, we have sent down droplets from the oceans of generosity, if only they will drink thereof. We have brought forth the murmuring prayers of the pure, if only they will listen with their souls. With the wings of joy, soar into the heavens of divine love. The people may be conceived as dead, associate only with the living. Regard as dead all the people of the world who have not perceived the sweet fragrance of the souls in this dawn. The self-subsisting calls out in thundering tones, saying, Joy has come to the world. Be not sorrowful. The secret has been revealed. Be not melancholy. If you were to attain to the triumph of this day, you would forsake the world and all that is therein and hasten to the divine court. O servant of God, the unfortunate are unaware of this victory, and the sorrowful receive no warmth from this blazing fire. O servant of God, the tree that we planted with the hand of munificence has given fruit, and the glad tidings that we gave in the book have appeared with a sign. O servant of God, once, in your dreams, we bestowed our effulgence on you, but you remained unaware. Now, remember the homeland and hasten with all your heart toward the unconstrained friend. Reading number four from Surah of the Companions. Bear the book of God with a power and a might deriving from us. Shrink not from bearing it, and feel no apprehension at its weight, for he will, in truth, protect you and will guard you from all trials and calamities. When any tribulation touches those endued with knowledge, it only increases their detachment in God and their yearning for that station which God has sanctified from the vicissitudes of time. If you find yourself alone between the heavens and the earth, then be pleased therewith, and with the one who created them, and do not be overwhelmed by trials and distress. Turn away from those who have disbelieved, and draw near to God. In truth, that is better for you than possession of the heavens and the earth and all that was created, whether hidden or manifest. Purify your hem from the tumult of the created world and quaff from the crimson chalice proffered by the hand of this most glorious youth so that your soul may be liberated from this world and the vanities and palaces that are therein. Say, so, people, do not fear.
focus on discrepancies among the verses we have revealed. For these have all descended from one strong in power, from the realm of immortality, and differ according to various stations, if you be among the discerning. Thus do we bestow on you a portion of the mysteries of the cause, lest your feet stumble on this exalted and manifest path. Conceal not the cause of your Lord to the extent that the divine fire is extinguished and all else besides it, nor openly proclaim it in such a way that harm befalls you. Follow a clear path between these two. Reading number five from Surah of Blood. If you wish to travel in various lands, then spread the dawning lights of your Lord throughout those realms. Think upon the handiwork of your Lord, which you see, that you may be of those who consider. Adorn yourself with my character in such wise that should anyone treat you unjustly, you would take no heed of him, nor oppose him. Leave him to the judgment of your Lord, the powerful, omnipotent and self-subsisting. Be at all times a wronged one, for this is one of my attributes, though none but the sincere are aware of it. Verily, the sighs of patience uttered by one wronged are more precious to God than any other deed. Did you but know? Therefore, be patient in the face of whatever befalls you, and set your trust in your Lord God in all your affairs. He verily suffices you against all the harm that any created thing can reap toward you, and preserves you in the shelter of his cause, in the mighty fortress of his guardianship. There is no God but Him. His are the worlds of creation and command, and all seek His aid. Should anyone slander you, you must not retaliate against him in kind, lest you become as he is. Turn aside from him, and set your face toward the holy tabernacle in this exalted and sacred canopy. Be among men as a sweet-scented knoll, that the fragrance of sanctity may be wafted among them. In such wise, you might succeed in attracting them to the court of the Holy and Beloved One. Should you find a helper among the friends of God, seek his company at eventide and dawn throughout the months and years. In all matters, emulate God, your succour. Walk among men with his dignity and peace, and teach them the cause of their Lord to the extent that they are able to hear it. Reading number six, from City of Radiant Acquiescence. Say, concourse of believers, be patient at what has befallen you, and be not anxious concerning the harm and suffering that have afflicted you. He shall bestow full recompense upon the long suffering. The world and its people shall pass away, and all shall return to their abode in the fire nor is there any escape for them from the vengeance of the Lord, the conquering, the subduing, the mighty, the omnipotent. Say, people of the earth, 
Do you not see the transformations occurring in the land and the changes the earth is undergoing, such that no second goes by without most affairs therein suffering an alteration? Therefore, what sign reassures your hearts and souls? Woe unto you! Upon what basis have you acted in this vain life? For you have advanced toward your base selves and turned away from the one who created you, nourished you, and showed greater compassion to you than has any other. Say, by God, you are only as a wayfarer resting in the shade of a tree. But that shade is of necessity ephemeral, and you must not repose your confidence in it or in anything that will pass away. Put your trust in what does not perish, in what endures in the immortality of God, the everlasting, the eternal, the glorious. Have you found that your mornings are like your evenings? Or that your youth is like your old age. All this is a reminder to you, Muslims. The contradictions apparent in all things were only ordained to remind you of the impermanence of yourselves, so that you might become aware of it and not be obdurate. Hold fast instead to the cord of God then firmly grasp the firm handle of the bayan. This is what was writ for you by the finger of the glorious, the true. Thus have we taught you the gems of knowledge, acquainted you with the wonders of wisdom, spoken to you of the realities of mystical insight, and shown you the paths of paradise so that thereby your hearts and the hearts of the mystic knowers might be reassured. Praise be to the Lord of the worlds and mercy be upon you, followers of the Bayan. Behold, I desire to sever myself from all names and to call out to my Lord with the melodies that enthrall the hearts of the Unitarians. Praise be to you, O God, my God. Send to your lovers what will refresh their hearts and calm their souls, so that they might make mention of you aloud, just as they make mention of you in their hearts. That is within your power which encompasses both the easy and the hard. My beloved, raise the standards of your triumph and victory above the people of your kingdom, that they might gather together in the shade of your loving kindness. These are the scattered who have dispersed through your lands and shall never find for themselves a refuge save with you or a sanctuary other than you, or an asylum except for you. Then gather them beneath the shadow of the tree of your loving kindness, and honour them with your grace. And verily, you are the most generous of the generous.